7.1 angle relationships in triangles when we're looking at angle relationship in triangles we have to understand what a triangle is a triangle is part of the polygon family a polygon is a shape it's a closed figure made up of line segments so another word for polygon is the word shape so any shape is considered a polygon a triangle is a special type of polygon. A vertex is the point where two line segments on any polygon meet. That's known as a vertex or a corner point. Interior angle is known as an angle that is formed on the inside of a polygon. It is formed by two sides meeting at a vertex on the inside of a shape. Exterior angle is the angle formed on the outside of a polygon by an extended line segment from one of the sides. Now, another word that we need to know is equiangular. Equiangular implies that there are equal sides all along the polygon. Okay, equal sides, you've seen equilateral triangles, and they imply that all the sides have equal angles and equal sides. Equal angular implies the, only the angles. Now, reminder again, a triangle is a special type of polygon. What kind of polygon? Well, it is a three-sided polygon. It has three angles with three sides. All right, a theorem. Now we're going to build this list over the next couple of lessons. So we are going to have uh, some information that you have to remember about a triangle. First of all, there is the supplementary angle theorem. Supplementary angle theorem is about a line. The short form for that is SAT. A diagram that looks like that is you have a straight line and then a straight angle and that angle is broken up into two parts, A and B. A plus B is equal to, that's right, 180 degrees. So supplementary angle theorem means all the sides add up, all the angles add up to equal 180 degrees in a straight line. So I could break this up multiple times, and this line would end up always adding up to 180 degrees. Next one. Complementary Angle Theorem. Complementary Angle Theorem, also known as CAT for short, implies that there is a complementary angle. A complementary angle is a 90 degree angle. And what this theorem says is if I break up a 90 degree angle into, one, into two or more parts, uh, the sum of all those parts, A plus B, will equal 90 degrees. That is known as the complementary angle theorem. Next one. Sum of the angles in a triangle theorem. You would have learned over the last few years about all the angles in a triangle. All the angles in a triangle, also known as SATT, stands for a formula that we use to add up all the angles. All the angles in a triangle, let's say A, B, and C, will add up to equal 180 degrees. That theorem you would have learned over the last few years. Next one is isosceles triangle theorem. Isosceles triangle theorem states, also known as ITT for short, states that if you have two sides that are equal in a triangle, you will also have that their angles are also equal. So two sides are equal, that means that two their opposite angles are equal. So here's a side, this is the opposite angle, that is equal to the other side's opposite angle. So two sides are equal, two angles are equal, known as the ITT theorem, uh, isosceles triangle theorem, also known as ITT. Next, equilateral triangle theorem, also known as ETT, states that if I know all the sides are equal sides, then that means that all the angles are also equal. 
What are those angles equal to? That's right, 60 degrees. All sides are equal. That means all angles are equal, and they are equal to 60 degrees. So an equilateral triangle is equiangular because all the angles are equal. Next, exterior angle theorem. Exterior angle in a triangle theorem is EATT, exterior angle triangle theorem. So what happens here is you have a triangle with one side extended. That angle on the outside is known as angle C. Angle C is equal to the sum of these two interior angles that is not supplementary to C. So not this angle, but I can take the sum of these two angles to equal angle C. So A plus B will equal angle C. Why this theorem was created was that it is a short way of being able to find the measure of angle C. Instead of, or finding the measure, short way to find one of these measures, because it would be another way you could do this angle, this particular solution is if we use SAT, which is supplementary angle theorem, and we used SATT to find one of these measures. So it's just a shorter way to get there, but there are multiple ways to use EATT. All right, next, opposite angle theorem which states that if I have OAT for short, which means that if I have two intersecting lines, states that the opposite angles to each other are equal. So A will equal A in this case because they are opposite each other, and B will equal B over here because they are opposite each other in two intersecting lines. Next. Quadrilateral angle theorem, or quadrilateral interior angle theorem. Quadrilateral interior angle theorem. And quadrilateral is another polygon, folks, that has four sides in the shape. So a four-sided shape is a quadrilateral. A three-sided shape is a triangle. QIAT is the quadrilateral interior angle theorem, which states... All the angles in a quadrilateral will always add up to 360 degrees. Later on, we're going to be able to develop a formula for any polygon. But right now, we're working on just the triangles and the quadrilaterals. So quadrilateral interior angle theorem states that all the interior angles of a quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. Quadrilateral exterior angle theorem states that all the angles on the outside will add up to 360 degrees. All the angles on the outside will add up to 360 degrees. And how we have to look at this is we have to look at how these values are calculated. Okay, so the quadrilateral exterior angle theorem states that if I add the exterior angles, which are supplementary to the interior angles, they will add up to equal 360 degrees as well. An interesting thing to note is that these are all the supplementary ang angles to the interior angles, and note that when I add them all up, they will actually equal 360 degrees. Pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to move on. We will be adding to this chart in a later lesson. Example one, determine the measure of the indicated angle. So we have a different shapes or different polygons with some exterior angles, some interior angles, and we need to determine the values of these particular missing information. So the measure of the indicated angle called X here. So got a couple more here, and here we go. So for this first one right here, what we can see is that this particular angle has to equal some value in order to find x. Can we figure that out? Well, right here, we can see that here we have an isosceles triangle. This isosceles triangle, because it is an isosceles triangle because we have two sides that are equal. In order to determine x, 
we find out that this angle must equal 50 degrees because of ITT. And yes, folks, we have to write the reason why we got a certain value. It's not enough just to know a value. We have to prove that value. So this angle is equal to 50 degrees. That means we can find x. We find x by using the supplementary angle theorem, which states that x must equal 130 degrees, that is 180 minus 50 degrees using SAT. So yes, it's important that you show me the reasoning as well as the value of the angle. And it is equal to 50 degrees, sorry, 130 degrees, because what we can do is take 180 degrees and minus 50 degrees, and that will equal our x value. So you can show that work just in case you get the wrong answer for x. All right, so we figured out part A. Let's look at part B. In part B, we have, again, oh, what does this tick mean? That's right, these two are equal. So again, we have an isosceles triangle, but this time we're given this angle. Does this angle help us determine what x is? Well, folks, not yet. We need to figure out what x is, but before we do that, we're probably going to need to find those angles. How are we going to do that? Well, what we need to do is call them y first, so we know that these two have to equal because of ITT. And 65 plus y plus y will equal 180 degrees. We know that because of SATT. Now don't forget, we also called these both y, so we need to claim that we used ITT as well. Now that we've, now that we've said, okay, we've used ITT, and we know adding up all these will equal 180 degrees, we actually write this out in the statement. 65 plus 2y equals 180, and we will move the, one, the 65 to the other side. So that is 2y equals 115 degrees. If you're not sure where I got this from, let's do it again. y plus y is equal to 2y, and 180 minus 65 is equal to 115. So 2y is equal to 115 degrees. That means that y is equal to 57.5 degrees. So again, y is equal to 57.5 degrees, that's this value and this value. We can now determine x. How can we do that? Well, we can use EATT to add up these two to equal x, or we can find the supplementary angle to y, then that will give us x. So either way, we will get the same answer. So one more time, x will equal 180 minus 57.5, using SAT, and that will give us 122.5 degrees. Another way that you could approach the exact same problem is by saying, all right, I can say that X is equal to 65 plus 57.5 using EATT, and that will also give us 122.5. Now, folks, I don't need both of these answers. I just need one of them. So you can give me the SAT reasoning to tell me that X equals 122.5, or you can give me the EATT reasoning that X is equal to 122.5. Either one of these is acceptable as a final solution to Part B. Next, the last one. All right, this last one. How we need to determine the value of X. In order to determine the value of X, what we can use is we can use these interior angles right here to be able to determine the value of x using EATT. To do that, to find these interior angles, we need to v give them a value. So we're going to call them y and z. Now, automatically you, sh you should be able to see that y will equal 180 minus 106. And that's because of, that's right, SAT and that will give us 74, 76 degrees, 74 degrees, sorry. So, y is equal to 74 degrees. 
Next, we need to do is determine the value of z. Z is equal to 74 degrees because of SAT. So, now what we need to do is determine the value of z. To determine the value of z, we need to take SAT again and take 180 minus 114 degrees using SAT. That is, z will equal 180 minus 114 will equal 66 degrees. So now we can determine the value of x. How do we do that? Well, we're going to use EATT to determine the value of x by taking the value of y and the value of z and adding them together because EATT says adding y plus z will equal x. Okay, x will equal 74 plus 66 which will give us, using EATT, which will give us a total of 140 degrees. Okay, moving on. The next piece. Oh, we, what we need to do is be able to do some of the worksheets that you were given. Pages 1, 2, 8, and 10 will be acceptable for homework and the worksheets given. All right, folks, that's the end of the video. Have a numerical day.